and welcome back to Bunter Shard. And today, in uh, part one, we are going to be repainting our Flying Scotsman in wartime black livery. Uh, yes, I know what you're going to say. Um, the purists out there and the people who care about this, uh, much more than I do, um, will notice that this is the wrong model. This is an A3 Flying Scotsman, which is quite a late model. Um, and in the uh, the kind of get up that this is with the twin chimneys, they were added in the late 50s and the smoke deflectors in the early 60s. Um, this means that this particular Flying Scotsman has missed the war by about 20 years. But this is the model I have. I saw it on eBay and uh, actually quite like the smoke deflectors. I think it gives it a nice, um, a nice look actually and i thought it looked nice in wartime livery it's only one once you sort of dig into the uh the actual details and get on the forums and so on um you realize that people are quite passionate about the details of uh a flying scotsman but anyway so this is the one we're going to do i do appreciate it. it is the wrong model this is an a3 wartime um flying scotsman was an a1 so uh yeah there we go and just one more apology before we get going uh, for this video and the next video is that i will possibly at some point during this video refer to flying scotsman as the flying scotsman and it isn't the flying scotsman um alan uh on uh, a forum yesterday i read i was quite passionate about the fact that the flying scotsman relates to flying scotsman with carriages behind it so it's the whole train uh, and the loco on its own is called Flying Scotsman. So I'll do my best, um, but I'm not going to guarantee that. I'm not going to say the Flying Scotsman when I really mean Flying Scotsman. Anyway, let's crack on. So there's been a few extras added to this. I think these lamps are, are an, an add-on. So we're going to lose those in a little bit. And there's one on the back of the tender as well. We'll, uh, we'll take that off. Um, I'll use it for saying else, they're quite nice. Uh, but this is the correct tender, I think, for wartime. So uh, the corridor version was deleted in about 1938. So uh, yeah, it should be correct. And the um, obviously we're going to repaint this, so the numbering is going to be redone. 60103, which sort of relates to uh, post-war, 1947 onwards, I think, something like that. Um, so we're going to lose that number. Obviously, we're gonna going to paint over it. And we're going to renumber it using these uh, Fox transfers. Now these are, um, I'll put a link down below to Fox transfers. I've no affiliation to them, but every time I've ordered, literally they've come the following day. So I uh, can't recommend them enough. So there's a couple of uh, repairs I need to do quickly to this. Uh, so this was sitting on the side. Um, I thought it was plastic. And the one on the other side is missing. But as I took it off to make a template, I realized it was actually made from cardboard so i've cut two uh new ones from a little piece of uh, plastic they're not the best in the world but um that's what i'm going to go with anyway i could have took a bit more time i think looking at it now um but they're just going to stick there and i'm going to put them on while the uh, loco's in one piece just so i get the alignment correct there's a bit of glue stuck on there not sure if it's super glue so we'll give it a quick go um see if we can scrape it off it seems a bit tough for that. So I need to get as much as I can off because, uh, and then otherwise I get a, a the, the bond won't be as good. So I'm just going to try and clean it off. Now we'll try it with debonder. So I've got super glue, uh, CA debonder, on on the brush. Let's see if we can soften it up a little bit. Well, it, it's helped a little bit, but uh, it still needs a bit of a scrape. So we're just going to scrape as much as we can back. If we damage the paintwork, as we know, it's really not going to matter because uh, we are going to, to repaint this in a moment anyway. So that's probably got enough off for uh, to get a good a good join. So we're using instant super glue. This is a quick drying, it's like 10 seconds or so, uh, but it is really quick. Just gonna put a little bit on there, that seems to where they attach. And then make sure I get this uh, right first time. And that's it. And then we'll do the other side. Once that's dry. 
And once that's painted black, I'm sure that'll look okay. So it's probably easier to paint this uh, if it's in in a couple of pieces. So we're going to take the, the body shell off. And I think it's just that one screw there. So let's get rid of that. And then we just need to lever that out. And it will come away. And that's it, we're done. So that just makes it much easier. We'll get less overspray on the wheels. Uh, and then we can paint the body thoroughly. Now the flying Scotsman um, badge there, I didn't get replacements for those. Uh, I thought we could probably mask this up. So I'm using uh, like a liquid mask from Vallejo. And this will dry uh, clear, pretty much clear. So we just dab it on as much as we can, as best we can. And then we'll leave this to dry. Um, for about 30 minutes or so, but as I say, go clear when once it's dry, you'll know when it's when it's dried. And what I did miss is those two glazed windows. There's actually one on the front uh, of the cab as well, and I missed that totally. But the uh, the side ones, I have um, uh, off the camera. I masked it with uh, the masking tape uh, because it's a nice sort of uh, easy shape to cut out with tape. So. Um, I just thought that it was just as easy as, uh, as using the masking fluid. Now the numbers, uh, they don't sit particularly proud, but I'm going to take them off anyway. And uh, we're using uh, these the Tamiya sponges, so these are for like, model makers use these. Uh, so this is a 600 grade, and then a 1000 grade and a 1500 grade. And it's, uh, we're going to use them one at a time. The, the larger the number, the finer the grade. So the 600 will get everything off. And the 1000 makes it a little bit smoother. And then the two, the 1500 makes it smoother still. Just makes the, uh, the transition uh, less obvious once we get to paint it. That is a bit dramatic for uh, you know, normal renumbering there, there are other ways to get it off, but because we're going to repaint this, I felt that that was just, uh, it's just as easy to do this. So we're really not using a lot of pressure, just uh, just really, really lightly, you can see it comes off quite readily. And you could probably stop with there with just that one uh, grade of uh, sponge, but I've gone uh, up to a final one just to make sure that it's, uh, it's as smooth as we're going to get. Now the lining, I'm not worried about the lining. I'm thinking that during uh, wartime, when they repainted these, they probably didn't um, take off the lining. We just paint over the whole thing anyway. So I pulled the lights off at the front. I'm not sure what they were attached with. Um, and I've just scraped back as much of the glue as I can. And using our Tamiya sponge again. We'll just get as much of that off as we can. Now the only part we're going to keep in colour is the uh, front and rear buffer beam. So the rear buffer beam isn't uh, isn't attached to the body, so I don't need to mask that. So I've masked the front one up. i um, just saved me repainting it a bit later on. And then we're going to repaint the whole body. Now during uh, wartime when these were repainted black, um, they were probably just the, I think the reason they used black is that it was one of the cheapest colours um, to, to paint everything again. Possibly um, one theory is that it made it difficult to see from the from the sky for the from the enemy forces. Um, but that's possibly not totally accurate because the, the biggest giveaway would be the, the smoke coming out of the chimney and the, the heat from the uh, from the firebox and the glow from the firebox. 
So um, probably black because it was the cheapest colour. But um, this was uh, so there's no lining on these. They are just totally plain black. So it's a really easy paint job. And I'm using just black primer here. I need to prime the body anyway. So it just made sense to just prime it. And we're not going to use the top colour. And we're just going to um, work on um, painting over the uh, the whole body using primer. And that's all we're going to use. So that's going to be our final colour. So there's lots of different angles. Obviously you need to make sure you, you, you attack this from all sides. Um, so that we get paint in... Uh, in every uh, nook and cranny that we can. And one of the reasons these weren't lined um, during uh, during the wartime is uh, apparently to save on labour to make it quicker to to repaint these in uh, black obviously lining and all the numbering takes quite a bit of time to do so um, uh, apparently it was because of that that these, uh, these weren't lined um, during wartime if you look on forums and uh, uh, different discussion groups there's lots of lots of um, theories about different things so it doesn't seem to be a definitive answer to lots of questions um, especially about Flying Scotsman and the other thing is I can't find any images from uh, wartime of Flying Scotsman um, in uh, wartime black you, you know you get I can only ever find the, the preserve pictures from like, the railway museum that sort of thing um, and they probably aren't as correct as um, as you would think because the numbering on those reflects um, numbers that would uh, appear on Scotsman uh, in about 1947 I think when they had that weird uh, number but anyway we'll come back to that in a bit so the uh, the, the tender much easier off the body we can use it on our um, patented um, body holder which is made from a toilet roll We're going to leave our primed body, which is our going to be our top coat, pretty much. We're going to leave that overnight to dry properly, so we get a nice, uh, nice bond and a nice uh, smooth finish. And you can just see the uh, the lines of the lining through the paintwork. Uh, it will dry slightly differently; it'll be less visible. But in the real world, probably the lines would have still been on the on the loco and the tender when it was repainted in uh, wartime black. So we let that uh, dry properly overnight and now we just need to prep the service ready for uh, decals. So we're using uh, Vallejo gloss varnish here and this just gives a smoother surface and it just gives the uh, the decals a better chance of um, sitting nicely and not having any sort of side effects like silvering where they don't actually um, it's weak air underneath um, and it doesn't actually bond to the surface so uh, so the gloss will help um, just a touch with that it's very uh, it's highly recommended that you do that anyway now with numbering on this one, um, so on the uh, on the tender uh, during the uh, wartime when they were all repainted, they dropped the L and the R, so they was just um, uh, the, the logos was just N and E. So we just gotta cut them out, ready to use. And then for the numbering, now if we uh, if we're modelling this in sort of 1944, like during 
actually wartime years. Um, Flying Scotsman was still 4472, um, despite, you know, all the heritage ones showing those different numbers on the side, so uh, 103 and so. So uh, so we're going to use the numbers 4472, so the, the, the number that most people associate with Flying Scotsman. So there's the first couple I've already put on. Now it's likely that, you know, during that time, um, is that the numbers wouldn't have actually been this sort of uh, this this blocked gold? Um, they would have just been plain white or yellow. Um, but I'm struggling to find any pictures to, to prove that, um, and so so nothing to work from. So we're using these numbers that we've got from Fox transfers. So we've got the first couple in. So we're just soaking these in just uh, warm water, not too hot and just a touch of um, washing up liquid in there just to break down the surface tension and then we're just going to slide it on and then we'll put that into place and we'll get the number two ready we'll get that soaking while we're working on the others and getting them in line Now looking at pictures, these uh, these are pretty close to that rail handrail, so we're going to uh, just line it up with that rail. That makes sure not too much water floating around on the uh, on the panel where you're doing the decals. That's why we've got the blue paper to soak up any sort of excess water from the um, top of the decal sheet otherwise then the numbers just float around and uh, you just chase yourself for ages it's just a matter of lining them up until you're happy with uh, with the final effect And then we're going to use this microsole, and uh, basically this will just soften the decal uh, a little bit, and uh, it will give like a paint-like finish, so it makes it uh, really um, sort of thin, and um, yeah, it just moulds to the surface really well. You're going to notice it more on curved surfaces or on the flat surface; it'll be it'll be perfect anyway. So just touch that in, and we try not to move the decal, although I did. And we just need to really straighten up really quickly because these will soften them quite a bit and they will become um, so easy to sort of damage so just need to be really careful once they're in place just uh, just leave them and let them dry thoroughly so we'll set that one aside and then we'll carry on with the tender now as I say on the tender they uh, drop the letters L and R, and we just uh, we're just going to use N and E. And again, can't find any um, true sort of uh, images from from that time, so uh, we're going on the uh, assumption that the N and the E will be above the um, sort of in line with the axle boxes, and they go straight along the middle of the um, of the loco, and that's what we're going to work towards doing. matter of lining them up just making them look visually uh, visually correct mopping up any excess water trying not to move the decal any more than I need to ready to go now so just slide it gently into place and then just we'll just line it up just to make sure they're uh, they're in the correct position so 
So once they're all done and dry, we'll leave them uh, a few hours to dry. We're going to give it a final coat with uh, lacquer. And this just uh, seals in the uh, decals. So that makes them a bit more uh, robust and not uh, so susceptible to any sort of handling. And then just unifies the whole of the surfaces. So all the surfaces are now the same. So obviously the cab was gloss. And this is a matte lacquer from, uh, from Vallejo. And we're just going to give it a coat all over. And it just makes everything um, yeah, unified and look the same. Same as on the, on the tender. And then we're just going to remove the mask in that we've had on the uh, on the windows and on the nameplate throughout this process. We don't need that anymore. And with the um, with the masking fluid, it's just a matter of just rubbing that back. Sometimes you can get an edge and peel the whole lot off. It's quite thin on here, so you just need to scrape it back until we reveal the uh, the original plate. And that's pretty much got it. So that's it for this one. So that's uh, Iron Scotsman in uh, wartime livery. Next video we'll be adding some weathering and some real coal. I um, hope you enjoyed this video. If not subscribed, please do that. Uh, otherwise, we'll still see you uh, in a few days. Have a good weekend. Bye for now.